Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Real Reviews by Look Prop and today we'll be talking about Riviere. Now in April alone, Riviere has sold 35 units. So we'll be talking today and discussing about why there's a sudden emergence of popularity for this project. Now as usual, we'll be talking about this project based on these five factors, location and accessibility, development quality and facilities, competitive pricing, rental yield and stack selection. So let's get on to the first point. So the first point, location and accessibility. Now, if we take a look at where Riviere is, this is the location. Now, it's along Singapore River, okay? Weirdly enough, if you see all these properties surrounding here, right, this zoning is actually District 9, which is in the core central area, right? Above Singapore River portion. Even Mirage Tower and Tribeca here are also zoned under District 9, which is core central region. Right. However, Riviere is actually zoned under District 3 which is a rest of central region zoning. So, I don't know why, I don't know how they, uh, they do their zoning but this is a small difference between the RCR and the CCR region. Now, I'll talk about the significance of this later on but it's just worth uh, noting. Now, if you are talking about the location itself, of course, it's nice to be facing and fronting Singapore River. You are only really minutes walk away from Great World City MRT, which is along the Thomson East Coast Line, and also Havelock, right, which is also along the Thomson East Coast Line. These two MRTs are slated to be opened up by this year, or if not, latest by next year, first quarter. Also, for all you millennials out there, right, and above, right, who used to party at Zook, uh, at the old location, Jakim Street. This is exactly where the old Zook was, right? This location. So you will be very, very familiar with that area. Uh, within walking distance is also Great World City. Now, Great World City recently re revamped their entire mall. They did a whole renovation of the place. So now it's a very refreshed uh, new mall with new stores inside, new retail stores inside. And I, I just went there last week. It's really, really nice. Also, very, very nearby is Robertson Key. Uh, where you have tons of dining options, you have bars and pubs there. Uh, it's a really good nightlife location as well. Also, if you're talking about nightlife, further along Singapore River, you see Clark Key, right? So you have a lot of uh, entertainment districts surrounding you. Not to mention, in the future, when this Thompson East Coast Line is being uh, opened up, right? You will be, let me just zoom out a little bit, you'll be only one stop away from Great World City down to Orchard Road, right? So you're only one MRT stop away from the entire Orchard Road shopping belt, uh, which again, you all will know has a lot of dining, shopping options, right? Now also for people who are working in the CBD area, it's also very accessible to the Central Business District. Now from Havelock MRT here, it is only about three stops, one, two, three, to get to, if you see below here, Shenton Way. Right, so this is the entire CBD area. So very, very accessible to Riviera location. Now, if we zoom out here, you can also see if you're talking about expressways, right? You have very quick drive to CTE, which links to AYE. It links you down to MCE as well as ECP here. So very accessible if you're driving as well. So if you're driving anywhere around Singapore, uh, you won't have trouble finding the nearest expressways. And in terms of transformation, if you're talking about the entire transformation within this area that will excite Riviere, other than a greater sound of waterfront, which I don't want to further elaborate, we have talked about this in many, many reviews, uh, it is actually pretty close to the greater sound of waterfront, which is just below here, all right? But uh, if you're talking about somewhere that's nearer to home, I've actually mentioned this in my last review of Canning Hill Pierce. If you want, link down in the description below, we'll link you there. Right. In that review, we talked about the latest transformation whereby they are rejuvenating the entire central area. So, URA has already laid out several key strategies they will use to rejuvenate the entire central area. Part of it is actually to link uh, our parks and everything from Fort Canning all the way down to Orchard area. So, 
uh, is to really increase the livability in the area. So if you want a more detailed version, go look at our Canning Hill Pierce review. So really nothing much I can complain about the location of Riviere. It is accessible to uh, uh, MRTs, it is great accessibility to dining options, shopping options, entertainment districts in the area, close to workplaces and CBD areas. So for the score of location and accessibility, I'm going to give it 4.5 over 5. So now the next point is development quality and facilities. Now the developer for this project is Frazier's Property. Now we are all very familiar with Frazier's Property. They are one of the most uh, reputable developers in Singapore, right? They have many, many projects they have done before, including, now if you take a look at their portfolio over here, you can see they have a lot of projects, more than 50 projects that they have already built so far in Singapore. Some of the more notable ones are places like North Park Residences at North Point City. You have Seaside Residences, Aid at Woodleigh, Flamingo Valley, uh, all these quality homes that they have already built so far. And the design architect is actually SCDA. Now, SCDA is also a very, very renowned uh, architect in Singapore. And as you can see here, many, many, many awards that they have won uh, ever since 2003, right? So very, very reputable. They have done many, many projects in Singapore as well. And if you were to take a look at the, the project itself, right? Uh, like I mentioned earlier on, this one is in District 3. Uh, it's in the central region along Singapore River, right? It is 99-year leasehold. We'll talk about how that is significant later. And there's 455 residential units that is existing in Riviera. Now what's interesting is that they also have a service apartments here, right? 80 units in total. So if you remember where Zook used to be, uh, they used to be inside these conserved warehouses uh, along Jakim Street. Now, what Riviera has done is they have retained all these warehouses. They're going to restore these three conserved warehouses and these warehouses will go, are going to be housing uh, commercial units inside uh, Riviera itself. So it will be quite exciting. I'll explain a little bit later on what these mean for uh, uh, the project as well. As for car park lots, right, there are a total of 364 car park lots. So it's not one-to-one -one car park lots. They only provide up to 80% of the units having car park lots, which uh, if you are being very close to the MRT station might not be a problem for the project. But it is worth noting that the, the two better units here, right, onwards, huh, you have 85% of the units, total units, are two bedders and onwards. So there might be a problem of finding car park spaces in Riviera in the future if all these own stay buyers right, are actually driving a car. Also, uh, TOP date for Riviera is actually slated to be this year, October 2022. So also if you look at the fittings and furnishings inside Riviera, you have all the branded finishings like Gagano, you have Gassi, you have Duravit finishing, you have smart home system. So whatever they are able to provide is actually all the high-end kind of quality uh, fittings and furnishings. So of course, if you are going to be talking about situated right at Singapore River, you're going to have many, many units inside this project, especially because it is a 36-storey uh, uh, project, right? You're going to have many units that will be facing Singapore River itself, which is, I think, in itself a very spectacular view, right? Of course, there are some units that are not going to be facing Singapore River, uh, which would, of course, not be your most premium facing, but just on the location of it along Singapore River already gives it a lot of uh, good views outside the unit. Now, if you were to take a look at the site plan, right? Now, if you're talking about facilities, you take a look at this site plan right here, right? Um, you will have all the facilities that you would want in a condo, right? You have your dining pavilions all around, which are air-conditioned as well. You have a gym that is actually potentially able to overlook the entire Singapore River if it is elevated enough. We are not sure of that yet, all right? You have a pool, a lap pool. This is not a 50 meters lap pool. It's actually just a 36 meter lap pool. Uh, and if you take a look at it this way, the first floor facilities are a little bit underwhelming. All right? um, and I attribute it mostly to because uh, if you see here, the conservation warehouses and the service apartments are actually taking up a lot of space, a lot of land right, inside this project. 
Now, if you were to talk about the Sky Deck facilities, right? Also, some of the facilities that you would want would be there. You will have a barbecue pit here, several dining pavilions around there, some resting pots, uh, some jacuzzi pool. So again, your top floor facilities are good. And if you were to stand on the top floor and overlook the entire Singapore River, it will be a very, very beautiful view. But it's all very standard and a little bit underwhelming. But what sells this product or this project is not the facilities in itself. I think the biggest sell of this project, if you were to look at future sellability, right, would be the three conservation shop houses here, housing several uh, 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 dining, F&B. Uh, if, uh, if I understand correctly, there should be a specialty grocer there as well. Uh, you will also have, you see this, this portion, right, will be the reception area for this entire uh, service suites here. So because of the commercial component over here, giving the residents an enhanced, luxurious uh, experience inside the entire project, I think it will elevate the entire image of Riviere and make it more sellable in the future as well. So it is a good trade-off to not have so much uh, facilities, so many facilities and actually trade it off with this entire experience in the project itself. So in conclusion, because Frasier's property is a very very experienced developer with a lot of good quality homes, SCDA being a very very good uh, architect with a lot of awards and accolades, and also although the facilities are a little bit underwhelming, you have the high-end experiences of the conservation warehouses and the service apartments, a creator for the residents, my score for development quality and facilities would be 4 over 5. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If you like the video so far, go down, like the video. Okay, go, subscribe to the channel. Okay, thank you, you have helped us a lot. Let's go on to the next point. Now, next up is competitive pricing. So, to compare, uh, we have to look at your competitors first. First thing, if you take a look at within a 500 meter radius of Riviere in the last 12 months, the first thing that jumps out is that there are a lot of competitors within the vicinity. So this, in most cases, is actually a, a, a con, right? It's not a plus point for the project because once you get into an area with a lot of competitors surrounding you, you'll have a lot of price competition, uh, buyers will have a lot of choices before they decide on your unit. So usually this will not be such a good point towards the project. But it is worth noting that if you were to take a look at the ages of all these competitors, most of them are pretty old. The only ones that are within 10 years of age are really these three projects here, right? Martin Modern, Up and Starlight Suites. All right, so today if you have to look at uh, apple to apple comparisons, we have to look at something that is equivalent or, or, or quite close in age group. So uh, there are a few projects that we can take a look at this area. Firstly, of course, just now we have seen Martin Modern. Martin Modern is one of the uh, few projects that have just TOP last year, so very, very new. You also have Irwell Hill Residences right here, which is also a 99-year leasehold project. You also have a project called The Avenir. This is also a new launch project uh, slated to be uh, TOP in the next two to three years. Uh, this is also a freehold project as well. So the, now let's take a look at the three projects that we were mentioning earlier on. As you can see, Irwell Hill Residences and Martin Modern, they are both 99-year leasehold projects, which is very new, 2021, and some of them are still constructing. They are asking for 2,003 to 3,003 per square feet. Irwell Hill is asking from 2,005 to 3,000 per square feet. So right now, Riviera is actually asking from 2,004 to 3,000 plus per square feet, which if you take a look at these comparisons here, actually seems like a very fair price and is very comparable to Irwell Hill and Martin Modern. And do take note, Riviera will actually be younger than Martin Modern because it will be uh, uh, built by this year and or next year. So it will be at least one or two years younger. So by right, it should be a, it should have a little bit of a premium over Martin Modern. Also because it is slightly closer to the MRT as well, right? Um, and if you were to compare to a freehold property, the Avenue is pretty new as well, all right? It is asking for 2,008 to 3,004. So what we are looking at is about a 400 per square feet difference in price to a freehold property that's just launched as well. 
So I would say that the pricing seems pretty fair at this point. However, it is really worth to note that these three projects here are actually in the core central region, CCR region, whereas Riviere is actually in District 3, which is in the RCR region, which I mentioned earlier on as well. So uh, technically, it is not as good a region in terms of RCR versus CCR, although technically it's in the same area, right? We understand that it's all in the same area. But in some people's eyes, if you are talking about RCR versus a CCR, there should be a price gap between these, uh, these few projects. So it is a kind of a minus point for Riviere, but I don't think that it's a very, very big problem because like I said, the area that they are existing in is essentially the same. But I think the very redeeming factor for Riviere is actually this. When it first launched, it actually launched 120 to 180 per square foot higher than the current price. So if you were to buy in at current prices, you're actually buying in lower than the initial launch, right? If you take a look here, back in 2019 when they first launched, uh, Unit 1812 was actually launched at 2.389 million, which is 2,900 plus per square feet. However, in 2022, the same stack, one floor above it, 1912, sold at 2.263 million at 2,766 per square feet. That's 160 square feet. Uh, uh, that's 160 per square feet difference uh, at 130k difference, about there, 130k difference. So if you're buying in now, you're essentially buying in lower than initial launch price. And why is that significant? Because if we try to understand who will be the first batch of uh, uh, people who will be selling Riviere, the first batch will definitely be the people who bought during the first launch because they own the property for more than three years. They reached the three years mark first, so they will be uh, uh, free of seller stamp duty. They will be the first batch to sell first. Once they sell, if they bought at say 2,009 per square foot, they would likely be selling at 3,000 per square foot and above. Now with this transaction already transacted, all of you who have bought uh, way after this first launch, which is this year, let's say you buy it this year, at 2,700 plus per square feet, for you to sell at 3,000 wouldn't be that big of a problem because there is already a caveated price that has transacted already. So this only means good news for buyers now. So for pricing wise, you are buying at quite a big discount from initial launch, that is a plus point. However, the competitors surrounding you are in the District 9 core central region, whereas Riviera is in the rest of central region. So that counts as a minus point for Riviera. Uh, so in this case, scoring wise, we'll give it 3 over 5. So next point is rental yield. Now let's take a look at the latest example we have, which is Martin Modern. As we can see here, Take a look at the rental volume over the last 12 months. It's 378 units rented out. Out of the 450 units that they have, that's a whopping 84% of the total project being rented out in the last 12 months. This means that it has very, very uh, high, very, very healthy rental volume. And I think that will translate to Riviere as well. So looking at Martin Modern, all right, uh, you can see that there are rental contracts here. All right, there are two bidders are renting at between 5,001 to about 7,001 per month. So that's a very big range of rental. Now if you were to look at Riviere uh, two better prices, right now they are going at between 2.28 million to 2.52 million. So if you were to take 5,001 to 7,001 uh, per month in rental and translate it into rental yield, we'll be looking at 2.8% to 3.3% rental yield, which in my opinion is very good for a core central region. So if you were to look at overall, the rental yield is very good, 2.8 to 3.3%. The rental volume is very healthy as well. So the score would be 4 over 5. Okay, so lastly for stack selection. Now we always use these factors to analyze stack selection. And if you were to take a look at the screen, these are our ideal stacks, our average stacks, and our not so ideal stacks. Now, to be honest, we are kind of nitpicking here. I do find that most of the units inside Riviere are actually very good facing. 
So the only ones that I find that are not so ideal are the ones that are facing the condos uh, beside it, which is Mirage Tower and Tribeca. And also the one that's facing directly into uh, Grand Copton uh, Waterfront Hotel. So for scoring of stack selection, it is 3.5 over 5. So if you were to gather up all the scores for the various factors, the total score would be 3.8 over 5 for Riviere. So if you like how we did the review for Riviere, all right, we do other reviews as well. Go and take a look at all our other real review uh, projects that we have done on this channel. Or if you have something in mind that you want us to review, leave it down in the comment section below. Or if there is something that you really want me to, to review for you, drop us a call, drop us a DM. We'll give you a customized review of the project in your mind. So if you like our review today, please go and like the video, go and subscribe to our channel. It'll help us a lot. We'll see you in the next real review. Bye.